We shall be talking about lymphatic drainage and association in this lecture. There are 11 lymph node clusters that you need to know for the USMLE or the complex exam. And we shall be looking at the areas of the body that's been drained and the associated pathology you need to know for the board exam. So here you can see an image of the lymphatic system. So we shall look at lymph node clusters, areas of the body drain, and associated pathology. So there are two main ducts you must know for the board exam. The first one is the right lymphatic duct, and the second one is the thoracic duct. Here in this animation, you can see here, we have the right lymphatic duct right here. Now the right lymphatic duct drains the entire right side of the body, anything above the diaphragm, into the junction of the right subclavian and internal jugular vein. So here is your right subclavian vein, and this is the right internal jugular vein, and you can see here we have the right lymphatic duct draining straight into it. Very, very important for you to know for the board exam. However, on the other side, we can see here the left thoracic duct, all right? That is another key important fact because the left thoracic duct drains everything into the junction of the left subclavian and internal jugular veins. Now, what pathology do you need to know for this lymphatic system? Well, if your patient has a penetrating neck trauma, right? Somebody gets stabbed in the neck and basically lacerates the left thoracic duct. Now, all the contact of the lymphatic system is gonna drain right into the thoracic cavity, causing a chylothorax. Chylothorax, very, very important. High yield fact to know for the board exam. Let's take a look at the lymph node cluster, starting with the cervical lymph nodes. Remember, these are clusters of lymph nodes around the cervical region, right? So these are all the lymph nodes just around the neck. And usually around the head and the neck is the areas that have been drained by the cervical lymph nodes. And what associated pathology do we need to know? Well, patients that have upper respiratory tract infection, you have streptococcal pharyngitis, right? Upper respiratory infection, the viruses, uh, infectious mononucleosis. These patients are all gonna have enlarged lymph nodes, right? They're gonna have lymphadenopathy around the neck region. Also, patients that have Kawasaki disease are gonna present with lymphadenopathy of the cervical area, okay? That's what you need to know for the board exam. Now let's talk about the mediastinal lymph nodes. These are actually around the trachea and the esophagus, okay? So they're gonna be right around this region here, okay? Now with mediastinal lymph nodes, associated pathology is usually a primary lung cancer metastasized usually to mediastinal lymph nodes or patient with granulomatose disease now, the next lymph node cluster is the hyalur lymph node, right? This is where the hyalur kind of sits around this area here. Well, with the hyalur lymph nodes, we're talking about the areas that we draining will be the lungs. The lungs drain into the hyalur lymph nodes, and thus patients that present with granulomatous diseases also can have associated pathology with these lymph nodes. What about the axillary, okay? Here's the axillary lymph nodes, right? This is where the axillary lymph nodes are, and they drain the upper limb the breast, skin, and anything above the umbilicus. Well, what, when are you gonna see enlarged lymph nodes around the axillary lymph nodes? Well, when patients have mastitis, right? When you have inflammation of the breast, well, the next lymph nodes are gonna be the axillary area, so automatically these are gonna be uh, developing a lot of pain in the axillary region, which is usually a lymphadenopathy. Also, the biggest thing is metastatic diseases such as breast cancer. That's super high yield on the board exam because what happens is a patient with breast cancer metastasizes straight to the axillary lymph node. That's why they get axillary lymph node dissection. Whenever a patient that's going undergoing either a mastectomy, they wanna make sure that the lymph nodes are already not being attacked by the cancer, so they might need to do a lymph node dissection. Also, once you harvest these lymph nodes, patients are gonna get a unilateral lymphedema of that extremities. So that, and usually that's one key important fact because the, lymph, the lymphatic system cannot drain that area of the body anymore. Now let's look at the celiac region. Now the celiac region is right around this area. You can see this lymph nodes here. All right, that's around the celiac region. Well, what do they drain? Well, they respond for draining organs such as the liver, stomach, spleen, pancreas, and the upper duodenum. Also, the superior mesenteric lymph nodes 
are also within this region and they will be draining the lower duodenum, jejunum, ileum, colon to the splenic flexure. Also, finally, we have the inferior mesenteric lymph nodes, right? They're just like around this region also. With inferior mesenteric lymph node clusters, they drain the colon from the splenic flexure to the upper rectum. Now, what pathology do you need to know for the board exam? Well, how about patients that present with their right lower quadrant abdominal pain? I know what you're thinking. Appendicitis, right? Well, hold that thought for a minute. Well, to call it like a, a 10 year old boy who presents a right lower quadrant tenderness, and then patient eventually gets a, a abdominal CT that shows lymphadenitis around the right lower quadrant. Well, what well, that's called mesenteric lymphadenitis, okay? They're basically a bunch of painful lymph nodes in the right lower quadrant, and it will present and look like an appendicitis, but it's really not. It's actually just inflamed lymph nodes usually from a viral infection. A patient has been exposed to previously. Now they present with abdominal pain in the right lower quadrant. So that's one of the key things that you notice with the celiacs, superior mesenteric and inferior mesenteric uh, lymph node clusters. And the other pathology is patients that have typhoid fever or ulcerative colitis or celiac disease will also have basically lymphadenopathy in the abdominal region. Now, the next one is known as the paraaortic lymph node clusters. So here, these are very, very important, okay? Here we have this paraaortic lymph nodes, right? Basically, they kind of highlighted here, you can see them, and basically line parallel to the aorta. Now, they usually drain the testes, ovaries, the kidneys, and the uterus. So the only time you're gonna notice a patient that has a lymphadenopathy a pathology associated with this lymph node is if they have metastasis, right? Patient with testicular cancer, right? Patient with ovarian cancer, renal cell carcinoma, or uterine cancer will always, always have pathologies associated with lymphadenopathy around this paraaortic lymph node. Also, the next one is the internal iliac lymph nodes, right? Here are your internal iliac lymph nodes where they usually drain the lower rectum to the inner canal, usually above the pectinate line, the bladder, vagina, especially the middle third, and the cervix and prostate. And also you have the superficial inguinal lymph nodes. Here are your inguinal lymph nodes. Those are the superficial inguinal lymph nodes. They're responsible for draining the inner canal below the pectinate line, okay? Remember the internal iliac drains the inner canal above the pectinate line. That line is very, very important in delineating the, the rectum. So the, also they also drain the skin below the umbilicus, except the popliteal area, and also drain the scrotum and the vulva. Now, when are you gonna notice a patient that have inguinal lymphadenopathy, right? Usually with sexually transmitted diseases, okay? So patients with STDs are gonna get this lymph nodes basically painful and typically that's what patients complain of. I feel a lump right in my in my groin. Well it's because either you have an STD, um, if a patient has a perirectal abscess for example, they are going to develop this enlarged lymph nodes, especially uh, if it's uh, an internal uh, lymph node that's actually enlarged. Now the last but not the least is our popliteal lymph nodes, right? This is the popliteal lymph node clusters. Now, those are ones that drain the dorsolateral foot and also the posterior calf. And often the pathology associated with it are the foot or leg cellulitis. So if a patient presents with cellulitis of low extremities, they develop redness, painful uh, low extremities, warm to touch, right, skin erythema. This is usually because they have a cellulitis of their low extremities. They're gonna have a lot of painful or uh, lymphadenopathy right around the popliteal area right by the behind their knee cap and usually that's what the patient complain of is because they have a basically uh, a nearby infection. So what I try to explain to patients or to students is that when a patient is complaining of a lymphadenopathy that's usually a nearby infection that's not that far away that the lymphatic system is basically sampling the antigens and they're getting, they're getting reactive lymphadenopathy. These are all the lymphatic drainage associations you need to know for the board exam. Thank you very much for watching. Have a great day. Bye-bye. 
Hey, thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you learned a lot. Are you studying for the USMLE Step 1 or Step 2? Are you studying for the NCLEX or you're currently in nursing school as a nursing student? Are you a PA student currently in school or studying for your PANS exam? Or are you a nurse practitioner student or trying to take your MP board exam. Listen, I've got super awesome content for you. If you truly love this video and it simplified your learning process, I want you to check out my website below. I've listed all the list of exams, whether you're studying for any of this board exam, and all I want you to do is click on the link right now below so that you can take you directly to my website. For USMLE, just go to smashusmle.com. For NCLEX, go to crushnclex.com. And if you're studying for the PANS exam, the nurse practitioner exam, or you're studying for your internal medicine board exam, just click below and take you directly to ftplectures.com. Listen, I can't wait to help you. If you need to get in touch with me, just get to my website, be able to reach me directly, and we can work together one-on-one. -on -one. Listen, you are super awesome, and my goal here is to help your dream come true. If you wanna be a doctor, wanna be a nurse practitioner, a registered nurse or physician assistant, I'm here to help you get to that next level. With your medical knowledge, let's save the world together. I love you guys. You guys are super awesome. And do not forget to click on the link below to be able to get to my website. Also, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. You guys have a great day. Let's go.